Welcome to College Algebra. In this lecture video, we're going to talk about um, relations and functions. Now, before I do that, I would like to uh, introduce the idea or the concept of interval notation. Okay, what is so-called interval notation is used to describe the solutions within a certain interval using any qualities, or we can use interval notations for what we so called domain and range of the function. So I will define these um, these three words in just in a minute. All right. So my note here says we will write the interval notation from left to the right of the number line that we graph. So normally when we read uh, the number line from left to the right, what that means is we are reading from small to large. Okay. We're reading from small to large. So that's how we will write the interval notation. So we will use brackets for less than equal to and greater than equal to. So with the equal to, we use a bracket. We use parentheses for less than, greater than, without the equal to. Or we use um, parentheses for negative infinity or infinity. So um, I got this example on your handout graph this solution okay and we're gonna write it out as interval notation so let me go ahead and graph this real quick and uh, we can write the I can write the interval notation for you so the problem says you know let's say our solution is x is greater than or equal to 7 numbers that are bigger than or equal to 7 like 8 like 7.5 7.6 9 10 so there's a lot of numbers that are greater than or equal to 7 and that's the reason why we need something called the interval notation to include all the answers so let's pretend 0 is here and 7 is here I want my answer to be greater than or equal to 7 so 7 is part of my answer so with the equal to I use a bracket and all my answers that are bigger than 7 will be to the right of 7 so everything to the right hand side of 7 is actually part of my solution now how large how far do I go to the right I go to infinity so if I can draw it then I can write the interval notation by stating my answer is from 7 using a bracket that means I'm including 7 as part of my answer comma comma means 2 somewhere my answer is from 7 to positive infinity and for infinity we always use parentheses because I cannot capture infinity so the bracket means I'm including 7 as part of my answer okay using parentheses or infinity simply implying that you can never include infinity because it keep on going now let's look at it from the other direction okay number that are less than ne to negative one less than negative one so same thing if I can say let's pretend zero is here negative one is to the left number that are smaller than negative one is everything to the left of negative one without the equal to that means I do not include negative one as part of my answer so negative one is almost like a reference point okay so I use a parenthesis to tell the reader that negative one is not part of the answer so how left do I go I go to negative infinity so when we read graphs from left to right or from small to large we write the interval notation the same way so small to large I will be using parentheses negative infinity all the way to negative 1 but not including negative 1 so that's why I use parentheses again okay so this two example is using interval notation for inequalities in a minute we will use parentheses and uh, we will use interval notations for domain and range so what is a function is the, the, the transition between um, beginning and intermediate algebra to college algebra is the idea of a function so um, what is a function by definition 
is a correspondence. A function is a correspondence between the domain and the range, such that every element in the domain corresponds to exactly one element in the range. So let me define what a domain is. So maybe I can come back and reread this. Domain, okay, of a function or of a graph is referring to how wide the function is or how wide the graph is. That means we will only look at the x value of the function. So for example, if I will draw you a straight line. Oh Lord, sorry. If I will draw you a straight line. Okay. A straight line how wide it is. So the way how we look at this is look at where it's going. This side is going to the right continuously but at the same time this side is also keep on going up. All right. The other arrow this side is going down I agree but at the same time it's going left as well. So the other side is going left and keep on going down. So a domain is referring to how wide this graph is. So how wide it is from the left to the right. Keep on going left, keep on going right. So that means the domain for this straight line got to be from negative infinity to infinity using interval notation. Alright, range is about how tall or the height of the graph or how tall the function is. So we were only looking at the y value of the function. So all the y value going down, 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 more negative y value, more positive y value. And that tells me that the range looking from small to large or down and up, that will be from negative infinity all the way up to positive infinity. Okay, what we do not see is the actual x value and the y value. Okay, so the idea of knowing that is keep on going left, keep on going down. The other side is keep on going right and up. Okay, that is you know so the idea of that without seeing the number is very very crucial um, when we take a look at domain and range. Okay. So, domain is about the x values, the range is about y values. So, what is considered as a function is a correspondence between the x values and the y value, such that every x value corresponds to exactly one y value. Okay, that's de by definition, that's what a function is. So, let me draw this out. Um, let's say my x values and the y value here in the table. x values are boys, y values are girls. By the definition it says every x value correspond to exactly one y value. So let's just say three and four. Okay, so that is by definition is a function. Another scenario by the definition is saying Okay, every x value, okay, let me do one and two. Every boys correspond to exactly one girl, y value. So what happened if I have the same y value? Every x value. What it does what it does not say is every different x value got to correspond to one y value. That's what it's really trying to say. So if I have a different x value correspond to exactly one y value, by definition that is a function. What is not a function is okay. Every element in the domain. Every x value correspond to. So what happened if I have the same y value? Excuse, excuse me, same x value but correspond to two different 
y value. That is actually not a function. Okay, you got to have different x value. Okay, got to have a different x value correspond to exactly one y value. So you may have the same y value as long as you got different x value is a is a function. Okay, so for example, okay, consider the following relation. Okay, this relation describe the domain and range. All right. So by looking at it, uh, the domain is just looking at the x value. If you uh, let me scroll down a little bit. If you look at this, okay, what this relation simply showing is just these four points on the graph. Okay. So the domain. So there is nothing in between these points. Okay, it's just simply these four points. So that means my domain is only going to just be the 4x value. So the domain, okay, it's just going to be a brace using a brace, 0. I, I normally write from small to large, just, just a force of habit. 0, 2, 0, negative 5. So I would just simply say negative 5, comma, zero and two now why don't I use interval notation for this example because interval notation is actually referring to the answer starting at somewhere to another place everybody in between is included this example there is nobody in between these points so I cannot use an interval notation to say oh it is for negative Five to two. Well, this problem doesn't have a negative four, doesn't have a negative three, negative two. So it just these four points. So in that case, we use a set notation. Using a brace is called a set notation. All right. So that tells the reader that the domain is only in the domain is only for these three x values. The range, which is looking at the y value of these four points. Again, there's nobody in between, so that's from negative 2, so excuse me, not from negative 2, it's just, I have a negative 2, I have a 1, and I have a 3. Okay, so these, the y values of these four points are my range. So, determine if the relation is a function, if it's not identified, true order pair as a proof. So, why, so this thing is not a function because there are two points okay that have what exactly the same x value okay cannot have the same x value okay to be a function you cannot have the same x value it's almost like saying okay one boy is the same boy cannot have two different girlfriends okay that is a no no all right so if you really plot this two point, okay, one three and one four. If I actually plot them, let me just kind of plot on here. One three, one four. If I plot them one three and one four, that actually give me two points on top of one another, just like the two point we identify is that is not a function. That provides something called a vertical line. Okay, so remember now a vertical line. Okay, a vertical line is where a line, every single x value on this line are the same. So for this vertical line, all the x values are the same. Okay, that's the reason why. So this problem, this is not a function. Okay, because the two x value repeated. That's why we use something called a vertical line test. All right, vertical line has the equation x equal to a number. It means all the x values are the same on that same vertical line, where the y values are different. So, for a relation that cannot be a function, is because you got same x value. So, vertical line, all the x values are the same. So that's why we use a vertical line test to determine whether our graphs are functions or not a function. 
So when the vertical line crosses the graph more than one time, then the graph or the function, okay, then it becomes not a function because we cannot have two the same x value. All right. So we'll do an example like this just in a minute. So um, the transition is go from equations that you solved before or we solve on the review to now it's calling a function. So let me make that transition for you real quick. So in the beginning algebra, you learn how to graph linear equation where we always write them as y equals to mx plus b. We always solve for y because now we are saying y is a function of x okay y is a function of x means y is equal to f of x okay y depends on what x is the y value depends on what x is okay so y becomes a function of x values or x variable okay so everything that we, you know, all, all the things that you learned before where we're solving for y equal, all those y equal becomes f of x or it's simply saying y is a function of x. So a function, when I use the word function, I mean a graph. When I use the, the word function, I mean, I'm also referring to the equation. When I'm using the word function, I'm also implying that input an x value first output a y value okay or it can be vice versa okay so a function is like a machine okay you put something in at one end and you output something at the other end of the um of the line of the you know assembly line so that's like a function a function is like a machine seems like all right so um, i'm gonna go through some of these common functions Okay, different types of common function with you right now, and we will talk more about each one of these in detail in other lecture videos. The most basic function we have is linear function. Okay, or a lot of uh, a lot of students referring to them as linear or straight line, or like graphing a linear equation. Okay, so we don't say equation anymore um, that often. We use the word function. Okay. So the generic form is ax plus b, or the one I wrote earlier, y equals mx plus b. The most basic one is uh, simply just graphing a 1x to the first power. We know this is a linear because the exponent is 1. So let's turn on our graphing calculator. Let's make sure everything is uh, set, ready to go. So first thing first, okay. If you click on y equal, this is where we will do all the graphing. If it's a function, then we can come to y equal because y is a function of x. Um, for graphs or for equations that are not a function, okay, there's another way to graph it. Um, we will talk more about that in um, um, later on this semester. All right, first thing, when you come to y equal, please um, clear out every single one of these. So if you don't mind, go down a little bit. Make sure every one of these are, um, make sure none of these um, these y's has anything in it. Otherwise, it will give you a weird, weird looking graphs. So I'm going to simply type in x. Okay, that's the most basic, basic linear function. All right, before we graph, I would like you to press zoom. Okay, press number six called zoom standard. In that case, it will give you a standard window. And what a standard window look like is your X minimum and maximum is from negative 10 to 10. So it's your Y minimum, Y maximum. So this picture from left to right is from negative 10 to 10. The Y value is from negative 10 to 10. Okay, that's your window. Right now, while we are messing with this, um, the word right above the window table set press second window. Let my table starting at zero tablet one at a time set both independent dependent as auto. Okay, 
So your independent variable will be your x. Your dependent variable will be your y value. Your y depends on what what the input x value is. So make sure you set these two on auto. Just highlight it, press enter. All right, let's go back to the graph. So if I now look at my table, my table starts at zero. You know, I can go up and down if I want. Now let's take a picture of this thing. Alright, so here is my linear function. So the straight line I, I drew earlier, excuse me about that. The straight line I drew earlier is a linear function, okay? Where one side keep on going right and up, the other side keep on going left and down. So domain and range are the same, negative infinity to infinity. I'm just gonna come back here and copy this, okay? quadratic function we know it's a quadratic equation or quadratic function because the variable x is to the second power so the most simple basic quadratic function is simply just x squared so I'm gonna go back to uh, my y equal simply type raising to the second power and we press graph and again um, just in case I forgot to mention uh, with these videos you can pause it at, at any moment okay if I'm going a little bit too fast or you can rewind parabola okay quadratic function pro, um, produce what we so call the parabola which is a u okay this is called a parabola all right so and I do kind of need y'all to mem uh, kind of um, comprehend what these pictures are. Okay, it helps if you know quadratic function always provides a with a picture of a U. All right. So if you look closely, um, th this side keep on going up. I do agree, but it's at the same time, it's also keep on going left. This side is also keep on going up. But at the same time, it's also keep on going to the right. All right. So this is right and up. Oops, sorry. This is right. This is left. Both of them is going up. So as far as domain concerned. Okay. One keep on going left, one side keep on going right. So read from small to large, the domain got to be what? From negative infinity to infinity. Okay. Alright, that's quadratic function. Okay. What is so called a rational function? Remember the word rational is also referring to as fraction. Okay. Your rational function, okay. For example, graphing f of x equal to 1 over x so I'm gonna do that for you um, there's a lot of different um, rational function look um, it has a lot of different look and we have uh, we dedicate a um, particular section in the textbook just for rational function so for right now I'm gonna graph you the most basic one okay so simply 1 divided by x okay and graph it looks something like this Okay, not very clear on what's going on here. So what I'm going to do is is make my x-axis, my x-min and x-max a little bit smaller. I'm going to squeeze it. Okay, I'm going to squeeze it to the middle. Same thing for the y-minimum, y-maximum. I'm going to squeeze it downward. So go to my window and changing everything to negative 5 to 5. So if I will squeeze the window, my picture will pop up. A little bit more clear there that's better all right so this is what the rational function look like um, the most basic one so if you're thinking about um, domain okay this side is keep on going to the right I know this side is keep on going up 
the other side keep on going to the left this part going down and remember okay remember if I have a fraction the denominator can never be zero okay and that is called the restrictions on the domain denominator can never be zero since my denominator only have a variable x that x cannot be zero so if I will go to my table and go to x equal to zero the y value is an error because my because my function does not exist when x equal to zero that's called a restriction on the domain okay it's called a restriction on the domain so my domain even though one side is keep on going right the other side is keep on going left my domain coming from left to the right is from negative infinity all the way to what I cannot be which is zero from negative infinity keep on approaching zero but I cannot be exactly zero since I cannot be zero I use a parenthesis union the other side will actually starting from zero as a reference point use a use a zero as a reference parenthesis keep on going to the right okay that will be my domain for this particular example one over x okay and you probably notice um, I don't talk much about range because range does change okay based on the type of function all right so most of the time I'm just naming off domain you know when I introduce a common function here what right, square root of X I'm gonna go back simply typing second square root put the X in there parenthesis um, I just messed with my window so I'm gonna go back to zoom number six automatically give me my standard window and that's it that's what a square root function look like I call it a radical function because I can also have a cube root function as well but for a square root function this is what it look like alright so this thing keep on going to the right at the same time it's also keep on going up that means the y value is keep on going upward okay so as far as domain concerned where did I start where did the domain begin it looked like it start at zero and that is correct but we cannot go by what it looked like so here's a little trick if you have a square root function and wondering where does a domain begin always set what's inside the radical equal to zero and solve for x and that will tell you where it began so yes this one the domain does start at zero and keep on going to the right to infinity so why do I use bracket for my zero? Because zero is actually on the line. It's actually part of my function. That's why I use bracket. This zero where the restriction on the domain where my x cannot be. That's why I use parenthesis. As a matter of fact, the range for this one will also be from zero to infinity. Keep on going up from zero. All right. Now, um, I'm gonna go to the table real quick, okay? See, when x equal to zero, y equal to zero. But when x equal to negative here, it says error because if you simply put a negative one, negative two inside the square root, it will be an imaginary number. Imaginary imaginary number simply means it does not exist on the real number line, x and y axis, okay? So that's why um, I said. To know where the function, be to know where the domain will begin, simply set whatever is inside the square root equal to zero and solve for x. Because if I have a square root of x minus two, then my domain, okay, will begin at positive two. It changes depends on what's inside the square root. Okay, 
So when we run into this again, okay, I will remind you this. How to do, how to find out where does the function begin. And graphing helps, okay. Graphing does help. Okay, to see, to confirm where you, you know, whether you're going to the right or going to the left. Alright, another common function is called the absolute value function. Um, you may have learned how to solve absolute value equation before. Okay, So let me just simply graph an absolute value function for you. The most simple, simplest one is square, uh, absolute value of x. So here I'm going to say, go to math, highlight the word number, abs is your absolute value and press X and absolute value of X give you a V okay a V will be an absolute value function look a lot like um, the parabola the quadratic function where this side keep on going right and up the left side keep on going left and up so my domain Got to be from negative infinity to infinity. So, even though we don't see all the x value, all the y value, but by looking at the graph, we know all the x values keep on getting bigger and bigger, and bigger, or getting smaller, smaller, smaller. That's why using interim notation can include all these x value or the y value. All right, um, I pick. Um, uh, this particular polynomial function because um, there's other ones okay I'm just using x to the third here for polynomial functions okay the textbook actually call these um, the form ax to the n power that's referring to polynomial functions so x to the third power is called a cubic functions excuse me um, cube um, you know, x to the third cubic functions. So let me show you what it looked like real quick. I think I said the wrong earlier. Um, square root cube root function for radical. This is called cubic function. I'm gonna clear that out. Press x raising to the third power. All right. So we will talk more about polynomial functions later on. But right now, for this particular example, I want to show you. A cubic function, x to the third power, looks something like this. So, this side keep on going to the right and up. Down here, keep on going left and down. So the domain and range will be from negative infinity to infinity. Right. For polynomial functions, that will always be the case. All right, so these are the common functions that we talk about in college algebra. Okay, I just wanted to go ahead and show you other pictures so you can begin to know, um, begin to kind of remember what they look like. It, it will make make um, make other lecture videos. Um, make uh, when you learn about other topics, it makes it a lot easier to know what they look like already. Alright, let's let's try some examples, okay? Talk about domain and range. So consider the following function or following relation. Okay, this is a parabola, okay? By knowing you know, about what I drew earlier, this is a parabola. Describe the domain and the range. So domain for a parabola where one side keep on going to the to the right, the other side keep on going to the left. So my domain got to be from negative infinity to infinity, from small to large. Now range is a little bit tricky. Okay, for different type of function, the range gets a little bit tricky. So for this particular example, I know both arrows point up, so I know my range is going to infinity. But where do I start 
from bottom and up. What's the most bottom point of my parabola? Look like it's located right here. Okay, but be careful now. This point is actually three comma negative one. Range is looking at the y value. So this negative one is the smallest y value on this parabola. So from small and up, that means my range gotta be from negative one to infinity. Infinity is always using parentheses. Do I use parentheses or bracket on the negative one? Brackets, because this is a point on the line, so it's part of my function, so I got to include that. Okay. Determine if the relation is a function. So to determine whether a graph is a function or not, we simply draw a vertical line. And it doesn't matter where I draw it, it will only cross the graph at one point. So yes, it is a function. Okay. All right, that's not too bad. Of course, you know, all these stuff that I drew here are functions, so we know this is a function. All right, I tried the, let's try these two right here. All right, determine whether the graph is a function or not a function first. Then we're going to figure out the domain and the range. If it's not a function, we call them a relation, okay? So either way, we can still call them a relation or a function. Either way, doesn't matter whether they're a function or not a function. So if I would draw a vertical line here, doesn't matter who I drew at, it will only cross my graph at one point. So yes, this one right here is a function. Okay, now if I move the same vertical line on my circle graph, you are actually intersecting at two different points of the graph. So that indicates at this point, in this point, the x values are the same, where we're going to have different y values. So this one is not a function. Come on, i and t backwards. All right, sorry about that. Type it too quick. All right, let's find the domain. Okay, this graph, this one on the left, is from here to here, and that's it. Okay, so the trick is always looking, is, is always writing down the point. What is the coordinate of this point where we begin? This coordinate looks like 0, comma, negative 1. This one here looks like five, six, seven, eight, eight, comma, negative one. So the domain from left to the right, small to large, got to be from zero to eight. Okay, that will include everybody in between. So using bracket for both because those two points are on the line. And what about range? If we just kind of look at it, both of the y value, the smallest y value on this graph starts at negative one, and the highest it goes is about right here. So that's a three. So my range is actually gonna be from negative one to three using brackets, because those, those values are on the line. Let me move this, my vertical line here. Oh, sorry. All right, so this one is not a function, but let's see, from left to the right, the most left point is right here. The most right is right here. So the coordinate, this is actually negative one, negative two. This one looks like it's a 5, negative 2. 
So as far as left to right, how wide it is, my domain got to be from negative one to five. And both of these points is on the circle, so I use bracket for both. Okay, it's not a function, this relation circle, you know, it still got domain and range. Alright, as far as the range concerned, let's look at the bot the most bottom point of a circle is right here. This is the highest point of the circle. So this is one, two, negative five. This one is two, one. So down and up, smallest y value in the circle is negative five, the higher is one. So my answer got to be from negative five to one. Okay. All right, so that's how we write domain and range using interval notations and determine whether the graph is a function or not a function. Now, um, these two examples, I'm giving you the pictures, okay? So what happens if I just give you um, a function straight up one and ask me the same thing? Determine the implied domain of the following function. So. Um, this will help. Graphing will help. So this is a square root function. So you kind of already know approximately it might look something like that. Okay, so so by remembering what these functions look like does help before you even graph. Alright, let's graph this function real quick. Let's see what it looks like so we can determine the domain second square root so in the parenthesis I'm gonna type x minus 8 all right I'm gonna close my parenthesis so that will move my cursor to the outside the square root um, if your graphing calculator does not quite look like mine right here move the cursor to the right to move uh, to move out of the um, square root okay because the minus 5 is going to be on the outside of the square root and it looks something like that. Oh, it's right there. It's, uh, it's from here. Keep on going to the right. So my, for my windows, I'm going to stretch a little bit to the right. So I'm going to say my X maximum. Go to a 20. So I can look more to the right. There. Okay. So here's my picture. So to write a domain, I need to know where it begins. Where does this begin at? So earlier I mentioned to know where the domain begins for a um, square root function. And it's true for the absolute value function too. Set was inside the square root equal to zero and solve for x. So if you move the negative 8 to the other side, x equal to 8. So that tells you that the domain begins at 8. And keep on going to the right to infinity. Okay. Um, a lot of times students tell me that, well, Mr. Chen, I can just go to my table and figure it out. I do agree, but realize this. Um, the table only display whole numbers, okay? So what happened if I have a 3x minus 8 right here? Then the table would not be able to display the decimal or the fraction um, points where it began, okay? So that's why, the, that's why the best way is always set was inside the square root equal to 0 and solve for x to know where we begin. All right, this function here to the right, that is a parabola because the x squared. So I know my domain for my parabola, for my quadratic function, I know my domain is automatically from negative infinity to infinity. So we don't have to graph this one. All right, this is a rational function. Um, the, just like the one I showed you earlier, 
where we say that denominator cannot equal to zero so this time whatever x is minus 5 cannot equal to zero so I will go ahead and figure that out so I will know what my restriction on the domain gonna become move the negative 5 over my x cannot equal to positive 5 so my restriction on the domain will be x cannot equal to 5 so let's graph this one let's take a look the numerator is only one term I can simply type in negative 10 divided by the denominator is two terms represent one denominator put them in the parentheses if not if you type in like this negative 10 divided by x minus 5 like that calculator see that as negative 10 over x then minus 5 on the side okay totally different all right so if I graph it oh sorry about that I kind of um, well this is not a bad picture I was gonna change my window back to standard but this is not a bad picture use it all right so again my function is divided up into two parts if I go to my table it will show that X cannot equal to 5 the Y value shows an error okay so this side keep on going left this side keep on going right so my domain gotta be from negative infinity all the way to 5 but I cannot include 5 union on the other side of 5 keep on going to infinity so um, I'm using 5 as a reference because can my domain be 4.9999999 can my domain be 4.9999999 yes it can it just cannot be 5 so that's why we use, we're still using 5 for reference it's because that will include all those decimals right before 5 and right after 5 like 5.0000001 okay see so that is actually allowed to have just not 5 though okay now this one here is kind of weird uh, this is a square root function inside of a rational function so let's see what's up with this one I have no idea what this thing looks like so in that case I'm just gonna graph it square root of x plus 5 close parenthesis because the division is on the outside the square root of 4 I'm gonna go back to my standard window uh, what is that that look weird it look kinda small so I'm gonna go to my window and I'm gonna shrink the y minimum and y maximum I'm gonna squeeze it go from negative 5 to 5 maybe it'll pop up a little bit oh okay it starts right here keep on going to the right okay so where did it begin as far as domain wise where did it begin by the way this is the same thing as if I was saying one fourth times square root of x plus 5 so this is a radical function. It just have a one fourth in front of it. Uh, where did that begin? If I said was inside the square root equal to zero and solve for x, I believe the x will equal to negative five. So that tell me that this function begin at negative five. The domain start at negative five. And keep on going to the right. All right, so that'll be my domain. Okay, now um, I'm gonna stop it here, and um, for part two, I'm gonna begin talk about evaluating function because um, after the, uh, starting with object number four, we we'll do a lot more arithmetic. All right, thank you for watching.